hello everyone <coughs> welcome to our channel easy explanation in this video tutorial we'll be learning about object oriented programming using c++ and the topic that i am going to discuss are class the concept of class access specifier object and member access so let me first discuss the concept of class So class. So before discussing the concept of class, uh, let me take you to the uh, concept of a structure and function that we have discussed in C programming language. So in C programming language, in C, a structure or a structures are used to group variables of different data types and functions so the use of function is to define action or behavior obviously there are so many limitations of structures that i have discussed in previous uh, videos of this series only so please go through that if you have not uh, followed the series so there obviously there are limitations of structures and these limitations of structure is solved by the concept of class in c plus plus and what class does is by using the concept of class we can combine the concept of structure and function into a single entity so any class concept uh, consists of the concept of a structure and function so the concept of a structure is to group the variables of different data types so class can be used to group data of different types plus it can be also used to group the different functions so any class consists of data and functions so when you define a class so a class would consist of data part as well as function part let us say so you're defining a class the concept of class and the class would consist of data and function so this concept of data is derived from the concept of a structure and function is derived from the concept of function so this is similar to the concept of function here so class consists of data part and function part so so this uh, this is the concept upon which the class is based now let us define class so the formal definition of class is class is a template or blueprint for creating objects so you have to understand this term it is a template or blueprint for creating objects so we'll be defining class to create the objects will be defining class to create the object so what relationship between class and object the relationship between class and object is similar to relationship between variable and data type so when we define a uh, variable what we do is something like int a so int is a data data type and a is a variable so the so class and object are related in the same way so we have a class and we have a object so you have to understand this concept so we have a class and we have an object and the relationship between class and object is similar to the relationship between data types and variable so we say a is a a is entity of type int right we'll define a variable we say a is an entity or a is a variable of type int so here a 
is a variable of type int right in the same case the relationship between class and object is so object is nothing but a it is a object is a variable of type class okay so when we uh, do it practically the things will uh, be more clear there so when you define the class so class is a template or blueprint for creating the object so most of the time most of the time here class is used to represent logical entity and objects are used to represent physical entity so class are used to represent logical entity one more thing that i am trying to uh, i will add here class is used to represent logical entity or any concepts any concept or any logical entity whereas objects are used to represent physical entity so what is the meaning of these two statements so we can understand these two statement uh, by using one example something like let us say if i'll say rectangle okay when i say rectangle you have a mental picture like a rectangle is a figure with length and breadth right so rectangle is a logical concept here or logical entity there right and when we create an actual rectangle with given length and given breadth then it will become an object similarly let us say if i say person so when i say person you will have a mental picture of any human beings with two hands two legs etc right and when i say ram or sita then they are the actual person so actual person are object and the person is a logical concept there similarly if i say vehicle then you will imagine a car or any truck or anything and when i'll say tesla tesla car then you will imagine a tesla so tesla is an actual car there and vehicle is a logical concept so always class is used to denote the logical entities so it may denote vehicle it may denote person it may denote a rectangle so by using this logical concept or entity we will be creating an actual object there so let us say for the uh, same example i will be repeating here let us say the concept of rectangle so rectangle here is a logical entity so i'll write here it is a logical entity and you know that the rectangle will have length and rectangle will have breadth right so it is a concept and this rectangle will have length and will have it will have some breadth and when i create an actual rectangle let us say i'm creating an actual rectangle here length 10 centimeter and breadth 2 centimeter so this actual rectangle is based on this map or blueprint of this rectangle right so this is the logical entity and this is the actual physical entity here so we can use this concept to describe the concept of class and we'll be using this concept to describe the concept of object here similarly not only like you can see rectangle have length and breadth so these are the two attributes here so length and breadth are the attributes of rectangle not only that so for given uh, logical entity we can define attributes as well as its behavior so length and breadth are used to denote the attribute of rectangle so it denotes the attribute of rectangle entity similarly we can also define action or behavior of rectangle like for the any given rectangle we can define its behavior so behavior are used to denote the functions right so behaviors are used to denote the function so for any rectangle 
we can calculate its area and we can calculate its perimeter right we can fill any given rectangle with any given color right so these are the behavior of that is associated with the rectangle right these are the behavior that are associated with the rectangle here so this rectangle class have attributes and behavior and this whole thing we can sum up into concept of class here now uh, let us relate this thing with the concept of object see for the attributes part the length is 10 cm and breadth is now 2 cm right now we can use this area and perimeter area perimeter and fill color to de to define the behavior of this given object rectangle this rectangle object so you can see we can say the area of this rectangle is 10 into 2 is equals to 20 cm square similarly perimeter is equals to 2 into 10 plus 2 is equals to 24 centimeter let us say i want i uh, will fill this rectangle with the yellow color now we are performing the actual operation on the given actual objects see we are performing operation on the given actual objects here so it uh, means operations are always performed on objects not on the logical entity so operations are always performed on the physical entity so this is the concept related to the class and objects here now i hope every one of you understood the concept like if you have any uh, uh, confusion related to this topic please mention in the comment section so what we'll do is now like uh, once you have understood the theory part of this uh, concept of class and object now let us move to the uh, move to this c plus plus part so now for the, uh, now let us define the class now the class will have this two part attributes and behavior so attributes are used to denote so attributes are used to denote the data and behavior is denoted by functions so data and functions so always remember classes are nothing but blueprint or template by which you can create an actual objects and objects are nothing but a instance or a variable of given class so how to define class in c pro, uh, how to define class in c++ programming language one more thing i want to add here is so class is the foundational concept of any object oriented programming language like uh, let us uh, take any object oriented programming language that you have in mind let's say java or let us say .NET. Uh, let us say python programming language so if you are uh, implementing object oriented programming concept in those programming language also you have to write the code by using the concept of class so class is the foundational concept of any object oriented programming language so all these programming languages have their own different syntax to define the classes right so in c++ programming language we also have uh, some syntax by which we can define the class so let us define the syntax to define class in object oriented programming language in this in this case c++ so syntax to define class so to define class we have to use a keyword called as a class then write the user defined class name so this class name should always means the class name should always follow uh, the conventions that we used to define a variable name okay in c programming language or in c++ programming language so class is a keyword here then define a class name of your type then use this curly braces to define its scope and within the class you can write the data type variable one data type variable two and so on so you can define as many data member you want and then 
return type and function one return type and function two you can define as many function you want and never forget to mention a semicolon after the curly braces so you can see the concept or the structure or the syntax of this class is very much similar to the uh, syntax of a structure that you used in C programming language so we have a class keyboard class name data type variable one data type variable two and the different functions so you can see so, so these parts data part are called as a data member and this part are called as a member functions so data are nothing but attribute related to this class and functions are nothing but behavior related to the class so functions are nothing but behavior related to the class and the data are nothing but a, a, a data members are nothing but attribute related to the given class name so always define class with data part as well as the function part so in this way we can define classes or class in object oriented programming language now once we have understood the concept of like how to write class in C++, C++ programming language now let us use the same example that we have discussed above the concept of rectangle let's see the attributes are length breadth and the behavior are area perimeter and field color so let us write it side by side so I'll write here class is a keyword everything in a small case and rectangle R E C T A N G L E. so always give the class name by following the conventions that we use for variable name so class rectangle then start the curly bracket and what are the attributes of rectangle the attributes of rectangle are length and breadth so write the two attributes so obviously the length and breadth will be of type double or float right so let us see i'm writing here float length this is one attribute float length and another attribute float breadth so we have a two attribute related to the rectangle one is length and another is breadth now once we have defined the attributes or data member of rectangle class now let us define the member function for the rectangle class so member functions are one is yeah, I means calculate area calculate perimeter and fill so uh, so defining the function is similar to the concept we used to define function in c programming language so we'll be using the same concept so function consists of the a return type and function name and the function definition so let us say void calculate area let us say write return length into breadth so this is one function that we have defined calculate area And another function is void calculate perimeter this is just an example okay. so this is not an executable code just an example return 2 into length plus breadth right and finally void fill color let us say a string color and I will write something like this see out red color or something like that and then now close this function here so 
so this is the closing for the fill color function and finally close the class that you have defined and never forget to write the semicolon so so this is the final result so see start close these are the data member and this is the member function these are the data member and these are the member function of class rectangle so this is the keyword this is the keyword class this is the actual class name these are the data member and these are the member function so this is how we define class in object oriented programming language that is c plus plus here that we are discussing now once you have idea of what is class what is object and you have got the theoretical concept also there and i have also provided you definition now let us write the actual code to implement the concept of class and object in c plus plus programming language for that i'll start coding in dev c plus plus you can use id of your choice for me i'll be using this dev c plus plus id here so for that first let us create a new source file file first i will save it as a so I'll give it a name so file name as lcprog1 and save it so I'll write a comment line first here this program Demonstrate basic concepts of class and object in C. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is import the libraries. So I have to include, so since we are using C, so one more thing that I want to tell you people is the extension for C++ is .cpp so never forget to mention that also there and once you have given the file name with extension .cpp you can start writing the code for that I will be using iOS stream I have discussed in detail about this library iOS stream and why will be using using namespace so if you do not know the concept please uh, follow uh, the other tutorial that I provided in this series Later namespace using namespace std we will be using standard namespace and main function is the entry point of a program right and right here return zero so this is the simple uh, c++ programming language without any classes defined we just have a member function sorry main function here now let us define a class so class rectangle so I will use this uh, add as a capital letter so since this uh, div c++ is intelligent id automatically places semicolon at the end so if your editor is not supporting that so you have to manually include a semicolon so after this closing process bracket now let us uh, write the length and breadth part for that we'll be using double or for simplicity they will let us write int only int length and int breadth int length and int breadth and I'll define two function here void set 
length int l and I will write length is equals to l void set breadth int b and I will write breadth is equals to b here so I have defined two member function length breadth to sorry to, uh, to data member length breadth and two member function set length and set breadth and finally I will write one more function void or int get area I will write something like this return length into breadth okay now once you define a template for rectangle so this is just a template or blueprint or we can say a map simply map like hard, uh, what your rectangle should look like it should have length it should have breadth you can set length you can set the breadth of a given rectangle and you can get the area means you can create rectangle of any length and any breadth by using this template by using this template one more time by using this template you can create any number of rectangle of given length and of given breadth so that is the uh, that is what the concept of class is all about so now once we have defined a uh, class now once you define a class now you can create an object of that class right so we have defined a logical concept here now let us create an actual object so rectangle so as I, I have already mentioned the relationship between class and object is very much similar to the relationship between data types and variable name so uh, when we are defining the data uh, variable we need to rewrite the data type and then variable name so data type in this case will be class name obviously rectangle and let us say r is a object so you can say r is variable of type rectangle we have r is a variable of type rectangle now once we have created an object here r is an object and rectangle is a class so r dot will be using dot operator to access the member function and the member variable will be using the dot operator to access the member function and member variable so r is an object and object can so object can access the member function and the member variable actual object so i have already showed you people like uh, actual operation is can only be found by using object so r can access the actual r can access the member variable and member function and as a set length 10 r dot set breadth 20 okay so this is the simple code that i've written creating an object r calling the member function with respect to this given r and another with respect to the given set breadth with respect to the same object r here well, I'll run this code it will throw error so what it doing is uh, let us read the error first c plus plus in function int main void rectangle set length is private here it is saying that like uh, as you know the, uh, the code or the program the entry point of program is main function the first line is successfully line number 24 is successfully executed we are successfully able to uh, create an object but in line number 25 when I am calling the set length function with respect to the R so what it does is it is throwing the error means set length is private it means it means that in C++ programming language by default everything is private within the class when it knows in C++ programming language everything by default is private within the class so i'll write it down for you people in c++ 
सी प्लस प्लस एवरीथिंग दैट इज डेटा एंड फंक्शंस इन सी प्लस प्लस एवरीथिंग इज प्राइवेट विद इन द क्लास प्राइवेट विद इन द क्लास मीन्स लेट से दिस इज अ क्लास रेक्टेंगल and then we have a main function so the main function cannot access the thing that is defined within the class rectangle it means they are private within the class only the functions can access the data member only the functions only the functions that are defined within the class can access the data member we cannot access the function or data member outside of the class means outside of rectangle class you can either access data you can either access function so that is the reason why it is throwing us the error to how to solve that problem so you can solve this problem by using the concept of access specifier so by default everything is private to the class by default everything is private to the class and we can solve this problem by using the concept of access specifier which provide us different keywords like private public vlic and then protected we'll be discussing about the concept of protected access specifier when we'll when i'll be discussing the concept of inheritance for now let us understand in like uh just the basic concept of private and public so by default everything is private within the class private in the sense the member function that is defined within the class can only access the data member that is defined within the given class you cannot access either data member or function from outside the class for that if you want to access the data member and function outside of the class then what you need to do you need to define this thing as a public you need to define your data or function as a public so for that what we'll do is i'll write a uh, so everything is by default private now what i'll do is i'm making a label expresses fire as a public now everything is public here so by default everything is private and i have made a label as a public means uh, after this label public everything that is defined below that by default become public public means now you can access length breadth that are the data members and set length and set breadth that are the member function from, uh, and gate area from outside of the given class means you can access from it from the main function now okay so that is the thing that you need to understand here so see this is the code okay now let us run this code again so i'll compile and run it again see no error you have not printed any output as well so no error at all so the program is successfully compiled and executed now in order to get the output what we have done is so set length set breadth length is set as a 10 and breadth is set as a 20 and obviously when length and breadth are set we have the value for length and we have value for breadth for the given object r now we have created an actual rectangle r with length 10 and breadth 20. now once we have done that let us print the area so for that we'll be using c out area is equals to what we can do is r dot now you can see i'm able to access the member function directly so we can call the function get area area 
sq dot cm and and then now let's run this code I can see area is 200 square centimeter this is the expected result that we are we are expecting from this code I can get the result something like this so this is how the object to enter programming in C++ is written you have defined the concept of class you have defined the concept of object how to uh, how to define the class how to define the object and how to access the member function and how to access the data member of a given class by using the concept of object so in this way we got the value here area is equals to 200 square centimeter one more thing that I need to uh, tell you people is so in any of the object oriented programming language like it is customary or it is always good practice to make member variable or data member as a private and the member function as a public so this is one of the concept of or feature of object oriented programming language so I think every one of you is familiar with the concept of data abstraction or data hiding abstraction one of the feature of object oriented programming language data abstraction discuss about the concept of data hiding so data hiding from accidental manipulation accidental manipulation or manipulation by other variables or other classes so for that what we'll do is how to perform data abstraction so it is always good practice so it is good practice to make data members as private and member functions as public so if you need to access the data member you can always or you should always access it through the member functions so data member functions should be def defined or declared as a public by using public level and data members should be defined using the private level or by using the private access specifier so we will be using this concept also here now instead of writing public here what i'll do is since we need to make the member function as public so public and by we know that by default everything is private in c plus plus programming language so by default and since we do not we need not to write the private level so by default it becomes private so length and breadth by default become private here and set length set breadth and gate area become public by using this pop since we have used public level here now let's run the code again and get the output as a 200 let us check it uh, the concept let us say c out length is equals to let's say r dot length and uh, so it will again throw error see so the error is in this part uh, the error saying in in int main function int rectangle is to length is private so private variables cannot be accessed from outside the class only public variable or public function can be accessed outside the class this is the thing that we need to remember while writing the code now let me comment it out and when we we'll comment it out the code will run again so in this way we can define class we can define object we can use access a specifier in order to implement the concept of data abstraction or 
data hiding. So now let us understand this thing again line by line this code. So the entry point of program is main function. We have created an object R of type rectangle. So what happened in the background? So what our compiler will do is when I'll declare this statement rectangle R so for rectangle the actual memory is not lo allocated and when you declare or when an object is instantiated or when an object is created then actual memory is allocated for this R object so R have a template of something like this so since R is an object it will have variable length empty now and variable breadth empty so these are the two member function sorry data member for rectangle r and then we have a function defined which is set length for this rectangle r set breadth for the same and get area so when we run this code this set of instruction then our compiler will create such type of memory image here rectangle part is length part is empty and breadth part is empty here and when we we'll call r dot set length since you can see set length set breadth and get area are the member function for this actual r object when we we'll call the function set length with value 10 so r dot set length with value 10 so the control will pass to line number 9 from line number 26 the control will pass to line number 9 and the l will be assigned with value 20 and when i will call this when the line number 11 will be executed so 10 will be assigned into variable length so 10 get assigned here so when i say r dot length it means we are referring to this value 10 here similarly r dot set breadth with the value 20 and 20 will be assigned here okay in this way this thing is done and when we will call this function r dot get area we will call this function r dot get area so the line that i will be executed is return length into breadth so in this case which part of length and breadth will be taken so since we are calling this function get area with respect to object r so it's the get area will be using the length which is assigned here is 10 and the value of breadth that it will be using is obviously its member value is 20 so 10 into 20 and the value 200 will be returned by the function get area so which will be returned into line number 29 and we are printing the result as it is so you can create as many variables you want let us say you want to create one more variable it is similar to creating like define a data type and define as many variables you want similar concept also here let us say uh, i'm defining one more rectangle let us say r which i have used here and one more s so you can create as many variables so we have created another object s so same case applies to this s object also s is an object length empty breadth empty and the function part set length set breadth and get area and we'll call this function uh, uh, when we call the function set length with respect to the object s s dot set length with value let us say 2 so the length will be 2 and we'll call this function s dot set breadth with value 5 and the breadth will be 5 now s is a object of type rectangle with length 2 and breadth 5 centimeter or anything and when we we'll call the function s dot get area obviously it will return 2 into 5 which is 10 square centimeter 
okay so let us so you can create as many variables you want so we have created one more object and i'll be copying it control c control v instead of r i'll be using s s for another object let us say this is two and this is five so we have created two object or one of first object r second object s area of first control c control b area of second is equals to we have to write s dot get area and obviously we'll be getting a separate value and result here see for the first object r the area is 200 square centimeter and for second object s the area is 10 square centimeter so this was the topic that was uh, trying to cover in this video tutorial so thank you for listening everyone please subscribe to our channel and if you have any query uh, or you are getting any error please mention in the comment section we'll try to fix it and if you have any doubt please mention in the comment section we'll try to answer it as soon as possible thank you so much everyone bye bye